Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I am in the book of Ezekiel. Now, in this particular book, Ezekiel is a prophet uh, speaking specifically to the people of Judah. They are being carried off into captivity in Babylon, and, and Ezekiel is sent as a prophet to these people to hopefully bring them back into a right and proper relationship with God. Now, very often you read in the book of Ezekiel, and it's very, very strange, some of the, uh, some of the uh, images that are there are, uh, are, are things that just are so fantastic, it's difficult for us to understand. I remember there's a commentary that I have that was written by uh, Dr. Stuart Briscoe on Ezekiel, and he says, all things weird and wonderful, and that kind of characterizes the book of Ezekiel. Well, in chapter 18 of Ezekiel, he's, uh, he, he is speaking to the people, and there is a proverb that uh, is apparently very common in those days. And the proverb goes like this, and he quotes it in verse 2. The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Now, the first time I read that, I confess to you, I didn't really understand what it was and what it meant, and I'm not absolutely sure I fully understand yet, except that in the context, uh, Ezekiel is saying that, that, that the sins of the fathers are not going to be meted out on the sons, and the sins of the sons are not going to be uh, punished in the fathers. He says, the soul that sins will die. And so, in other words, the, the meaning of this proverb apparently is that if you eat sour grapes, and maybe you've had some, um, you, you taste a grape and you think it's going to be sweet, and it comes out to be very sour, and you remember how that feels on your teeth, and, uh, and, and that's the idea, that's the, uh, the image that's right here. So, so the, the sins of the fathers... The experience of the fathers is not going to be meted out on the sons. The, sour, the fathers eat the sour grapes, but the children are the ones that have the teeth that are set on edge. That's not going to happen, Ezekiel says. The one who sins is responsible for his own sin. The one who sins is going to die. And so it is with, really with all of mankind but in our generation as well as any other generation. Yes, we recognize that that still is true where uh, Moses said that the sins of the fathers are visited on the children to the third and fourth generation. We recognize that there are some tendencies toward the same sin generation after generation after generation. We call those generational sins. Someone who is an alcoholic, chances are his children will have tendency toward alcoholism. Someone who has one particular physical characteristic, and this isn't necessarily sin, but, but uh, your doctor asks you about your family history when it comes to diabetes or heart condition or strokes or any of those kinds of things. And those may not be sins, but we recognize that the experience and the tendency of one generation follows into the next. And Ezekiel is saying to the people, no, the one who sins is going to die. These people, the fathers, had been the ones that had rejected God back in Judah. But the sons now are experiencing a certain measure of that judgment because they're the ones that are going to be going into and living in captivity in Babylon. But Ezekiel says that, that they will live if they, if they turn and follow the, the, the God that created them. They will live if they are faithful to him, even as he's been faithful to them. The sins of those fathers are going to be visited on the fathers. The soul that sins will die. Well, the good news for all of us who have put our faith in Christ is that, yes, we are responsible for our sins, but we can, we can shed that responsibility to Christ. 
I don't want to suggest to you that that we can go out and sin without regard to him or uh, that, that there are no consequences to us that way, but the punishment of our sin has been carried through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. And that's why the old hymn writer could say, uh, not, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless go to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. Augustus Toplady, who wrote Rock of Ages, understood that, it's, that, that the things that we have done, we will not pay for if we have put our faith and our trust in the Rock of Ages, in Jesus. And I hope you've done that. Let's pray together. God, our Father, thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus for my sin. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus for the sins of those who are listening right now, who have put their faith in you. And we praise you and we thank you that even though we're guilty sinners, we'll not bear that guilt because you have borne it for us. We praise you that you are our substitute. Meet us now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.